Kachum putti gum tanu tanu, Kachum putti gum tanu tanu, Wallum putti gum tanu tanu, Wapum putti gum tanu tanu, Kachum putti gum tanu tanu. Welcome to Lesson 22 of the Mountain Mighty Language Class. Today, we're going to make up new words using the infixes pie, wall, and cuckoos. Then we'll listen to another Mame Gallagher recording and make sure we understand what she's saying. We'll start on page 43 in the Modern Mighty Workbook with the infix pie. It could mean against, up against, onto, or at. Here are some examples at the top of this page of words we already have in the regular dictionary from native speakers. The first one is bowwall, which means wind and also means blow, like the wind. Bowwall. Bowwall pie means blow against. Bowwall pie. Uh, skip down to dock, which means stick or get stuck. Dock pie means stick to. Remember the word dull from last lesson? It means tie. Dull pie means tie to. Now let's invent some new words using pie. In the middle of the page we have a table showing in the first column a word we might need. The first one is accuse. We don't have this word in our regular dictionary, but we do have the word weye, say. If we add the pi infix to weye, we get weye pi, say against or speak against, which could be accuse. Weye way, weye pi. Next one, say you wanted a word like belittle somebody or badmouth somebody. We have the word wasweye, say bad things. Now we want to be able to say, say bad things against somebody. How would you say that? Wasweye pie. My sim nick wasweye pie con. They bad mouthed me. My sim nick wasweye pie con. Tomdan means crash. How would you say crash into? Tom Don Pie. What if you wanted to make up a word for oppose or challenge somebody? We have a word halcheto, disagree. You could say halcheto pie, disagree with. Bebum weye, halcheto pie. Now let's look at the wall infix. The wall infix has at least two meanings. The one we'll use in this lesson to make up new words is a fun one. Tell somebody to do. Go to page 44 in the Modern Mighty Workbook. In the middle of the page where it says 2H, these are words we already have in the regular dictionary that have the infix wall. Tell somebody to do. For example, the first one is dus chikinu. Keep your eyes closed. Add wall and it becomes dus chikinu wall. Tell somebody to keep their eyes closed. Bebomwaya, dus chikinu wall. If you skip down a couple, you see kaaimen. Don't talk like that or don't say such things. Way away, kai men. How would you say, tell somebody not to talk like that? Kai men wo. Min tuni kai men wo pi. Tell your little brother not to talk like that. What about kai pe? Eat dinner. Tell somebody to eat dinner is kai pe wo. Way away kai pe wo. Me is give. Tell somebody to give is me wo. Sodoi is bring. Tell somebody to bring is sodoi wo. 
爸爸妈妈所代话。So is sing. Tell somebody to sing is so war. Way away, so war. Min baker, so war pee. Tell your dad to sing. Min baker, so war pee. Now, at the bottom of page 44, we're going to invent some new words using the wall infix. Say we want to invent a word for bid or make an offer. You're proposing something that you want the other party to accept. We have a word made out tall, take what is offered. When you're proposing something, you're telling the other person to take what you're offering them. So you would add wall to the end of made out tall. Made out to wall. Beba moye, made out to wall. Anim tawalna, made out to wall kas. I bid for that job. Anim tawalna, made out to wall kas. Notice I put na on the end of work or job. You're bidding for the job or in my do towards the job. I made an offer on that house. Anim hibona made out to walk us. Next one. What if you wanted to say dare, like you're daring somebody to do something? We have a word, mati, bring about, make it happen. You could add the wall infix to mati. Mati wall, tell somebody to make it happen. Dare them to do it. Way away, mati wall. We'll skip a couple here. What if you wanted a word for nominate? Like you're nominating somebody to run for office. We have the word onkoito, compete, weyewe, onkoito. When you're nominating somebody, you're telling them to compete. So how would you invent a mighty word for nominate? Onkoito wo. Bebo moye onkoi to wo. The last one is a word for supervise or manage people. We have a word, tawa, work. What does tawa wo mean? Tell somebody to work. Tawa wo. How would you say manager? Tawa wo ke. Somebody who tells people to work. Now, as I mentioned, the wo infix can have another meaning too. That is wind off in the distance or go off somewhere, but not in a straight line or meander. You'll see a lot of mighty words with the wo infix that has that meaning. And usually when it does, it's followed by another infix of motion direction. For example, wo kit. Wo koi, wo pin, wo chopin, wo sip, wo doi, and even wo no, meander along, that no infix means along, meander along, wo no, which looks exactly like our wo no ending meaning completion, ended up doing, or had done. There just aren't enough syllables in any language to cover all the meanings, so we have to reuse the same ones for different meanings sometimes. There's also a word root wall, which can have different meanings, like get caught in a trap, hit, stab, start a fire, or cry out. So look out for wall. It can have a lot of different meanings. When it's an infix, meaning tell somebody to do, it is often the last infix in the word. When it means wind off in the distance, it usually comes before other infixes. Now, you may have noticed a couple of little dialogues on page 44 and 45. Try these out. That way you can see how to use the new words in sentences by adding the right endings. Our last infix for the day is a fun one. It's one of my favorites, cuckoos. This one means pretend to be or act like. Don't forget to pronounce those glottalized Ks, cuckoos. Here's a list of actual Maidu words from Maidu speakers that have this infix. 
Tsai Takonu means look somewhere else. What do you think Tsai Tsokono Kukus means? Pretend to look somewhere else. Pretending to look somewhere else. Tsai Tsokono Kukus Dom. Temen means not see. Temen Kukus means pretend not to see. Temen Kukus. Anim Tiwi Pemaida. Temen Kukus Kas. I pretended not to see that naked man. Anim tiwi pemaida chimen kukus kas. A word for a newborn baby is konoka. To act like a baby is kono kukus. Look through the rest of the list. Pretend to know makit kukus. Pretend to be deaf or act like you're deaf. Ol kukus. Pretend to eat pe kukus. Pretend to read yawi kukus. Aren't these great? He, eh. If you wanted to say act in a movie or be an actor or actress, how could you say that? What are you doing as an actor? You're pretending to be someone else, right? Someone else is Tsai. So pretend to be someone else is Tsai Kukus. Way away, Tsai Kukus. And then you could make it into an actor by adding the k ending. Tsai kukus k. What if you wanted a word for flatter or kiss up to somebody? We have a word kuidak, like somebody. If you're flattering someone, you might be pretending to like them, right? Kuidak kukus, pretend to like or flatter. Bebo moye. How would you make up a word for scribble, which is like pretend to write? Bal cuckoos. Now we're going to listen to a recording. For those of you not old enough to remember tape recordings on actual tapes, let me tell you about bleed through, or at least that's what we used to call it. Since you can record on both sides of a tape, sometimes when that tape got old, what was on the other side could bleed through. I think that's what happened to this tape, where we can hear Shipley's music and conversations in the background that must have been on the other side or another part of the tape that was stored up against this one. In this recording, we're going to hear a little about the elementary school Mame Gallagher went to called Clear Creek School. I'm going to play the whole recording first so you can see how much you understand. Then we'll go through it line by line. Clear Creek in Yawitikum the born I guess school go one up. In Clam Program Nick Tony. Wollem Tertum Gausum, the set of Nova Savo, a pepper, a cumin, and save the scum. Only must be saved water to them, whom what men say water to them, and sitting, sitting Wollem Tempum, fourteen years old, ten. I'm <laughs> We learn of them to come in with rock by no idea. Clem with the rope, rope kit mapped. I don't nick to new back and then clem with the in no chaman custom, a archi domacho, a pile. 
I'm on day um, picky moving, curing, palm curing, my chum, calf, kin, do my chum, clock, no, check out the dog. Sitting a kit because young, you know, do can do a kit dog. My name, roll and ten, and can I and chehe, dick no dog. มีเอติกเกอินโนเจนูดอมดอมใช้เอกมาจอกตัวดอมอันเบยุสิปุนิเบยเยฟีจอมเบยมีมุกีมุเอติมาคือมันอารมณ์ผู้อำนาจมันว
with a rock or rocks. Weyeyewe oni ni se wodatodon. Ma'at means, for example, hitting us with rocks, for example. Could be other things too. Humbok mini ni se worato usan. They used to hit us with anything. The white kids at that time used to be very naughty, hitting us with rocks, for example. They used to hit us with anything. Humbok mini with that extra n. Me, that N-I means with anything. Now, I'll tell you to listen again, but I'll say it in Maidu instead of English. Instead of saying listen again, I'll say, Bebam pin canoop. Listen again. Way away, Bebam pin canoop. Um. Wolem Tertum Gausum, the Tetum was a way better. A cumin, save scum. Only might be say what I told him. Um, what men say what I told him. Next sentence. Sitting Wolem Tem Cumam. Fourteen years old time. Sutim Wolum Tim. What does that mean? One white kid. Kakum Mom, 14 years old, Pim, was 14 years old. Notice how she puts a Maidu ending Pim on English, 14 years old. Kakum Mom. We would say in English, was or was at that time. This kakuma'am is mentioned in lesson nine of the grammar book. Remember in the last lesson we ran into it too, the uncle's Indian name kakuma'am, chobam. His Indian name was at that time, chobam. Tetem Wolim, big white guy. Bebam Pinkanoop. Fourteen years old time. The temple Wolem. Next sentence. I'm a Nick Tenev. We don't claim to do. What does that mean? Amam refers to the last one mentioned. Who was that? That to Tem Wolem. Then she says, Mum, he, Niktini Weyadom, speaking to my little brother. A lot of times to make things clearer, people will say a subject with a dom verb to let you know for sure who's doing that action. Mum niktini weyadom. He speaking to my little brother. Now, how do you know it's not the little brother who's speaking? Niktini does not end in M, so he can't be doing the action. Now she quotes what he said. When you have quotation marks around the words, it's called a direct quote. And what's inside the quote is supposed to be exactly what they said. Munklem putatuk pitike. You know what kalempabem means. Girl. What does munklem putata mean? We just talked about the t, t ending, making it plural, like ta is one child, ta t, t is children. Mun kalem those girls. Way away, mun kalem 
Adding a K at the end of putata is like adding apostrophe S in English. Here's a new word that some of you might be kind of surprised and offended about. Pitique. Pitique means poop. Pitique is the thing that poops, which you might translate as anus. Now, if you have sensitivities about words, cover your ears. When I do this, it means cover your ears. This is the way you say, asshole. Maybe I should warn those of you with sensitive ears when I'm gonna say something like that. So I'll cover my ears. Our teacher freely used this word in our classes. And in fact, he told us he'd been called pitika in several languages. So back to our sentence. What do you think the whole quote means? Mung kalem putatuk pitika cheta pu'e. Che means see, and che ta means look at or look upon. The p ending means let's to do it. Let's to look at those girls' assholes. After the quote, Mame Gallagher says, apa aye. I don't know if you remember this from a few lessons back, but the pa aye ending is like Choyam in that it means apparently. And it's also like the dome words in that it means apparently do ing, like dome means ing. The little verb a ah means say, so apa aye means apparently saying. Now, you'll find this kind of sentence structure very common in Maidu for a direct quote. Before the quote, it may tell you who said it and that will have an M on the end, the one doing the action of speaking. In this sentence, it's mum, he, but the person won't actually say said yet. Then before or after the quote, there might be a dome word for say or speak or tell or ask to tell how it was said. In this sentence, it's way a dome. This tells you some detail about how the quote was said or if it was said to somebody. Remember, this dome word can be left out or it can be either before or after the quote. Then after the quote, there's almost always some form of that little verb, a, ah, plus an ending like a paaye in this one. But more commonly, it's a toyam, a dome, a kumam, or a kan. So that one, he's speaking to my little brother. Let's look at those girls' anuses, apparently saying. Bebum Pinkanup, Mame Gallagher. Notice I didn't add any word to to Pinkanu. Pinkanu already means listen to, so you don't add another to. Bebum Pinkanup, Mame Gallagher. Listen to. Mame Gallagher. I'm a Munich to me. We don't claim good to do the Pitigu Chatapu a pie. Now, was Mame Gallagher there hearing this? We, oui. if she personally heard what was said, she would have said Adom, Akumam, or Akan instead of apaaye, apparently saying. She's guessing based on what happened next. What do you think Badoi Takudi means? What would you do if I told you Badoi Kit? Sit down. Badoi Ta means sit on. Badoi Taku means seat. What you sit on. Bebamwe Badoi Taku. 
What do you think Petim Uyi means? Literally, it's the shed house, outhouse, or bathroom. Mim Petim Uyim Bedoy Taka, that previously mentioned outhouse seat. Makika Hea. Maisim Mulenopem Chakami Mase. Now, what's strange about this sentence is the word maisem, they, more than two. So far in the story, there are two boys planning to look at the girls' butts. But now there's more than two, and they're up to something else that's bad. I suspect that Shipley spliced the tapes to combine two different stories into one. More on this later. Dakpai, of course, means stick to. Dakpai tea, make something stick to something. Chakami means pitch. Mase dakpai tea onoye tido, making it go around, causing to stick to them. Wale means run. Waleno means run along. And by saying waleno pem chakami, Maybe she meant runny pitch. So what were they putting around on the seats to make them sticky? Pitch. Kalem putatuk badoik hit ma pity is a lot like what you had in the last lesson. Maidik chemen ma pity. Do you remember what that meant? to the place where people won't see. Maidak chimen mapiti. So what do you think this means? Kalem putatuk badoikit mapiti. At the place where girls will sit down, where the girls will sit. Then they ran runny pitch around the seat of the toilet where the girls would sit down to make it stick to them. Any time you want to say a sentence with where, but it's not a question, don't use the question word for where. In English, we have the same word where, whether it's a question or telling about a place. But in Maidu, the question word where, homondi, is only for questions. If you're not asking a question, you need to use this construction that we've been showing you that's way different from English. Where the girls will sit down is kalem putatuk bedoikit mapadi. No word for where is in there, but you see the ending, petty, tells you it's a place. Then those guys on that outhouse seat ran runny pitch around where girls would sit down to make it stick to them. Babam Pin Knup Main Gallagher. I think my son, when Pitim, when we go to Kudi, I son, Iska Chakami, we learn of him, Chakami, Miss Rakpai, no, I did him. Clemble to dig with oil. Next sentence. I don't need to know. I'm back and then. Can we just take in no chaman because I'm a yachty do much or a pile. Now we're back to the first story about peaky get girls butts. Who's doing the action in this sentence? Nick to them. How do we know? Nick Tanim ends in M, my little brother. Again, we have a direct quote and the person talking is Nick Tanim. In my do, you don't say my little brother said before the quote like you would in English. You wait till after the quote to say said. Instead, you just say who's talking and you use the M on the end of that person, like Nick Tunim. Then you go right into the exact quote. So, what does her little brother say? 
mum a peckham ben kalem put it took in all chamancas. All of those girls butts we too will see. A peckham ben means each and every one. In all is but you may remember. Mum a peckham ben kalem put it took in all chamancas. We too will see chamancas. Back to the two guys that were looking at butts. Not the other story about the pitch. Then after the quote is where you say, he sat in Maidu. Here she says, Achaya, he apparently sat. Did she hear him say it herself? We. Oui. If she had, she would have said Akan or Akumam. So even though she and her little brother went to the same school, and she talks about some of their experiences that she knows about firsthand. She's letting us know that this part she was not witness to. Another th typical thing about Maidu quotes is that one or more do dome words can be sprinkled around the quote telling how they said it, as I mentioned earlier. For example, here she adds Eyatidom, telling us he was saying something like those words, showing us she doesn't really know the exact words. And she adds a paaie, which we know is a speculative form of dome, apparently saying. Now, this one line of Mame Gallagher's shows that Roland Dixon and William Shipley were wrong about a couple of things. In both Roland Dixon's and William Shipley's grammar books, they both said that the twam ending meant it is said. I can see why they thought this, because it does tell us that it's hearsay. So you might say it is said, but grammatically, atoyam means he, she, or they apparently said. It's not passive, it's not is said, but refers to somebody, a real subject who did say it. When you have a passive construction, you avoid telling who did it. If you say it is said, we don't know who said, but that's not what a choya means. It's active and it's past tense. Not is said, the action was done in the past. We know that the um ending is always past tense. And any verb can have a choyam ending, meaning he, she, or they apparently did. Now it's especially ridiculous to translate this main Gallagher sentence to it is said. If we translate this sentence the way Shipley suggests, it would be, all of those little girls' butts we too will see, it is said. Obviously, that doesn't make any sense. We know who said it. It was Nick Tunim, my little brother. The sentence tells us that her little brother said it. Nick Tunim, eyatidom, atoya, apaaye. My little brother saying something like that, apparently said, and apparently saying. I hope you all understand why we don't go along with Shipley and Dixon's translation of It Is Said. We have a better translation. The toyam or toya ending always means it happened in the past, and the person that's telling the story did not see or hear it firsthand. Shipley went on to say on page 52 of his grammar book that the pa'aye ending meant long ago in ancient or mythical times or long before my time. However, this one line in his own recordings proves him wrong. Mame Gallagher uses both a toya and a pa'aye in this sentence. She's talking about something that definitely happened in her lifetime not in ancient mythical times. Shipley was trying to make sense out of some of these verb forms, but without realizing how particular the Maidu language is about showing whether you know something firsthand or from hearsay, he misinterpreted some of these things. Now I'm gonna point out Shipley's and Dixon's mistakes as we go along and show you how we know they were wrong, and I'm not trying to bash them. We can all appreciate that they wrote down the language and recorded the speakers, so we have a chance of learning this language today. We're able to see more because we're standing on their shoulders. 
Someday, some of you will be finding my mistakes and showing, with the help of recordings and evidence from native speakers, how I got various things wrong. And that will make me very happy. It will mean you are surpassing me. And that's what my goal is for you. Just make sure you have evidence. We need to accept that anyone can make mistakes, misinterpret, and get some things wrong, no matter who they are. Now, on to the next sentence. What do you think Pitim Uyim Kudi means? Behind the outhouse. Pa is a general word for willows or brush that you might find in a creek bed or a wet area. The Susan River in Susanville is Palm Sewi in Maidu. What do you think Palm Cutie means? Behind the bushes. Way away, Palm Cutie. Here's another new word, Kaukinudon. When a Maidu word starts with Ka, with that glottalized K, it usually means doing something secret or sneaky. Ka ukinu means be crouched down in a sneaky way, secret way. Beba moyep, ka ukinu. Another word, tsekarodong, means watching secretly. That ka inside tsekarodong is the same ka I just talked about, meaning secretly. Beba moyep, tsekarodong. Behind the outhouse, behind the bushes, those two crouching down, those two secretly watching women. Mim Gallagher, Babam Pinkanoop, Unimwea. Amambe Pitimuin, Kirin, Palm Kirin, my chum, Kaukin, Domachum, Klokno, Chicago. Next sentence. Sitim Okitweko is young, you know. Sutim. What does that mean? One. It's used as a subject here, not as an adjective. One apparently came down. Okitwekoi. The wekoi infix can mean sounds like. Okitwekoi. Sound like somebody came down. Here again, Mam Gallagher uses the choyam ending, apparently. You can see that it is said would not be a good translation. But did Mame Gallagher witness this personally? This somebody coming into the outhouse? We. Yenodon, entering. Mum bedoikitdon, she, sitting down. It sounded like one apparently came down. Entering, sitting down. Next sentence. Amuni, then. The subject is now changing to another person. Mum Wolum Tim, that white kid. Mum Wolum Tim, Mum Kanayan An Chehehe Diknodom. That white kid, he from below, Kanayan An, looking around until seeing. Chehehe means look around. Literally, it means look chasing or look hunting. He means chase or hunt. To he he diknodom. With the dikno infix, which means reach or arrive, it's sort of like look around till your eyes finally get to what you're looking for. Bebam weya. To he he diknodom.
What does this mean? Makima etik ino chanuro. Makima eti is his sister. Makima etik ino is his sister's butt. Makima etik ino chanuro, staring at his sister's butt. Matokito. Matokito means be under the impression. Matokito being under the impression. Bebam weyap. Matokito ro. Taik matokito ro. What do you think that means? You know that tai means someone else. Taik means someone else's. In other words, someone else's butt. Taik matokito ro. Being under the impression it was someone else's but not his sister's. Way away, taik matokitodo. Amam yesitmani be yepi toyam be maki maeti makumani. What is the main verb in this sentence? The verb that shows who's doing the action. He was apparently ashamed. Now, this is a good, complex sentence. Yusip means come out or go out. Yusip minibe. This one is going to have a different subject from the main verb. How do we know? Because of the money ending. I hope you remember from our complex sentence lesson. So who do you think is doing the action of the money verb, yusip money, since it's not the white kid who is ashamed? That's the main verb in the sentence. This is going to be a different subject. So who is it? Yusip money. His sister. When she went out. When she went out of the outhouse, he was apparently ashamed. See how the subjects are different? Ha, eh. When you have two of the word be like this, it can mean as soon as. Yusip mani be, yepi choyam be. As soon as she came out, he was ashamed. Now, the verb maku turns out to be also has the mani ending. So it also has a different subject from the main verb yepi choyam. Makima eti makumini. It tur she turned out to be his sister. Obviously, this is a different subject from the Wolam Tem who was ashamed. I know the muni sounds a little cut off, almost sounds like men, but that doesn't make any sense to me. This was a great complex sentence. The main verb was yapi tsoyam. Who is the subject? Wolam Tam. Apparently, the white kid was apparently ashamed. The verbs ending in mani have a different subject. Amani, yasip mani, and makumani. His sister is the subject of those. The verbs ending in dom have the same subject as the main verb. Chehehe diknodom. Tsenudom. Machokitodom. The subject of those is Wolam Tem, the same person who was the subject of Yepi Tsoyam. He's the same guy that was ashamed. Did those other three things that ended in Dom. Now, do you see why it's important to learn about complex sentences? Ha eh. So the whole sentence means. Then that white kid from below, looking around till he saw it, while staring at his sister's butt and being under the impression it was somebody else's, he was apparently ashamed as soon as she came out when she turned out to be his sister. Now, when Mame Gallagher tells this story, she uses the toyam ending several times when talking about what the white kid did. So, do you think she was there and watched the whole thing? We next sentence. A room pool, Mamma, Willem Clamp, 
Now Shipley seems to splice in the second story about the pitch smeared toilet seat. Amam Wolonkalem Pabenkakan Yawikum Habodi Yinpindom. What does that mean? That white girl is Yinpindom. Do you remember this word? What if I told you Yinpin? Welcome or come on in. So she's coming on in to where? Yawikum Habodi, the schoolhouse. Now that helping verb kakan goes with both dom words, yin pin dom and bedoiket dom. She's coming in and she's sitting down. Why do you think Mame Gallagher switches to the present imperfect tense? She's not using past tense here. She's saying she is coming on in and she is sitting down. Well, it's a way to make the story more exciting like it's happening right now. In English, we might say, she comes in and sits down. Makes you wonder what's gonna happen next. Amuni shows the subject is changing. It was the white girl who or what is the new subject? Her skirt, maki nawasim. Notice nawasim skirt ends in M. Dakpaidom. What does that mean? Sticking to. Bomuti means be pitiful. Bebamwaya. Bomuti. Chati means to show or look. Now, this isn't the kind of look you do with your eyes. That's che or cheta. Cheti means make somebody else look. In English, we use the same word look for both meanings. You look good doesn't mean using your vision to look good. You're making other people's eyes notice you. Cheti is that kind of look. What do you think bomuti cheti kumam? means. She looked pitiful. Add an extra T in there and it turns into it made her look pitiful. The skirt made her look pitiful, sticking to her. Bebamoya bomotitim chetikumam. Now, was Mame Gallagher there to witness this? Did she see this firsthand? Ha, eh. Otherwise, she would have said, Cheti Choyam. But she says, Cheti Kumam. Now, the last word is Chakam Taporam. You already ran into the word Chakami, pitch. The ending tapopem means covered with. Bebamoya, chakam tapopem. Covered with pitch. But she says chakam taporom. What do you think that means? Being covered with pitch. Here's another similar one. Butu is hair. How would you say covered with hair? Butu is also fur. Covered with hair or fur. Butui tapopem. How would you say being covered with hair? Butui tapodom. Then her skirt sticking to her made her look pitiful, being covered with pitch. Next sentence. Kaapem. That's the kind of. Wasambomom. Bad bunch. Bad group. That's the kind of bad bunch. Kausan. There used to be. Mahewem. Yawikum. Hobodi. In that particular school. 
Mahalem, that one. Words with hell in them can refer to pointing to something or pointing out something, pointing the way or being pointed in the right direction. Bebam weep, kaapam wasamba mong kausan, mahewam yawikam habodi. Let's practice some direct quotes real quick. Today we learned about direct quotes. Let's practice just a little to make sure you know how to quote somebody. Try to say, the white kid said, go away. Mumwolam tem, chayakoi akan. Make sure you put an M on the end of tem. Mumwolam tem. That's the one who's saying it. Then, after you say what he really said, chayakoi in quotes, then akan, said. That means you saw it yourself. Or you could have said akumam if it happened in, a long time ago. But if you weren't there, you could say atoyam. Now try to say, my mother told my little brother go to bed. First, I hope you said nickname with an M on the end. That's the person who's talking. My mother, nickname. So she's the subject. Then you can say, Nikteni Weyadom, speaking to my little brother. Then the quote, Tweekanop, go to bed. Or you could have said, Tweekit Mankano, or Tweekit P. Or another command that's similar like that. That's exactly what she said with quotes around it. After that, you should say a khan or a kumma'am or a toyam, she said. So the whole sentence should be niknem niktani weyadom tweekit ma'ankano a khan. The niktani weyadom can come before or after the quote. Did you get it right? So I hope you'll go back over the recording and listen again, learn the new words, and practice those sentences. And please go back to the Modern Maidu workbook and make up some new words and practice the dialogues. Hell, Kaninka Khan, Chamakas Min Chaiman.